All right, so uh, with that, I'm going to um, jump to my last um, topic, which is um, about the star uh, Betelgeuse. And this is something that you might have heard about over the last several months um, in the sense that uh, Betelgeuse is a red giant star. It's in the, um, the shoulder of Orion, the left shoulder, and it, um, it has been decreasing in brightness over the last several months. And, um, and so there's been speculation by some in the astronomical community and by um, just lots of um, interested amateurs as well that um, this could be a star um, that could be on the verge of going supernova. And, um, and so I just want to talk about um, the evidence for, um, for the variability and, uh, and, um, and some of the most recent observations that have been released that might point to um, what, what is happening with the star. Uh, Betelgeuse is a, um, a star in um, what's known as a red supergiant phase. And so this, is, um, this occurs for stars that are at the tor towards the end of their lives um, when they've run out of the main um, hydrogen fuel um, that is uh, occurring um, that in nuclear fusion that provides the energy for the star. And so um, the hydrogen burns into helium and um, for uh, more massive stars, there's also a, a cycle where uh, the helium um, can, can, can be burned and converted to, into carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And that burns a lot hotter, uh, but it also um, uses up um, that fuel um, more quickly as well. And so as um, more and more of that helium fuel is used up, um, the burning of um, the, the nuclear fusion uh, migrates out towards the outer envelope of the star and that um, energy generation can basically cause the outer envelope of, of the star to puff out. And so that, um, that's what gives you the, um, that giant um, or supergiant phase. And Betelgeuse is basically large enough that we think that if you were to swap Betelgeuse with the sun in our solar system, um, the star itself would extend um, pretty much out to the orbit of Jupiter. And so here, uh, is an artist's depiction of what uh, Betelgeuse would be like if you were to um, to map it or to show the orbits, of, uh, the locations of the planets in our solar system. So basically, all the terrestrial planets out to Mars um, would be swallowed up by um, by the star. And um, but uh, in addition to the surface of the star, um, the the star is also expelling gas out as well, and so there's evidence of gas and dust that's been expelled out that extends many uh, Betelgeuse radii away um, from the central star. And so again, um, if you were to swap Betelgeuse out, you can see that the material that we observe emanating from Betelgeuse would basically cover most of our solar system. It would extend out to um, Neptune. Now, Betelgeuse um, obviously is a star that's um, been observed for all of human history. Um, we think that um, the star has been in its current state for many hundreds of thousands of years, if not the last past million years or so. And so that means um, the human species um, has seen Betelgeuse in the sky. Um, and, and more recently, we've had um, telescopic observations. And, and what's interesting is that if you, um, uh, for, um, you can actually plot um, to see how variable it has been over time. So. Um, this is um, from uh, an observatory um, that um, looks at variable stars, and um, this is um, these numbers are an astronomer's um, way of um, plotting the brightness of the star. So the brightest is at the top, um, where Betelgeuse has magnitude zero, and so over time you can see that it um, it's actually vary between zero and 1.5, and I actually don't know off the top of my head. Um, how much um, magnitude 1.5 is compared to, um, or how much less bright it is compared to zero. But uh, more recently, as you go from the early 20th century to today, um, not only do you get more observations, but there's this big perilous dip near the present day. So let's zoom in. So instead of um, going from 1913 to today, let's just look at the last 25 years or so. So again, um, the, we see that Betelgeuse has varied quite a bit, uh, but it's always been within this band between zero and 1.5 magnitudes. But then, as we get closer and closer, um, just um, within the last few years, um, you can see um, it hasn't actually varied much between zero and one first magnitude. Um, 
the the gaps in the data um, occur when Betelgeuse is too close to the sun for us to observe. And then finally, um, when we looked just in the last five months or so, you can see how much Betelgeuse has dropped over time. And um, going from zero to two magnitudes is about six times um, difference in brightness. So that means currently today, Betelgeuse is about 15% um, the, uh, the maximum brightness um, of around um, zero. So um, clearly, um, there's a lot um, that has happened to Betelgeuse. And, um, and right now, um, you know, even though um, we studied supernova um, quite a bit and people have created simulations and theoretical models of what uh, must happen to um, stars um, when they go supernova, we've never observed a star this close up going supernova or, or, or a star uh, before it went supernova this close up. This is only 700 light years away. So we, um, astronomers don't actually know whether this is a precursor to a supernova or not. But there are um, the, the more rec uh, rec most recent observations show that um, there might be some, some other things going on. And, um, but the um, European Southern Observatory has um, optical t telescopes that, are, um, that, that can be set up in, 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 as an interferometer. And so they can also um, image um, stars like Betelgeuse um, really um, finely. And so they show that a year ago, Betelgeuse had um, this um, kind of shape. You know, it's not exactly perfectly round, but it's uh, more or less um, looks like a star. But more recently, it has a much more asymmetric and distorted shape where um, it's not as un uniformly bright. And so there's a central core of brightness, but then there's part of the star that's actually much dimmer. Um, and so that su suggests that what we're seeing um, is perhaps um, dust being um, emitted from Betelgeuse that's occluding the, um, the, the star's brightness. Or possibly, we could even be seeing, um, and, and we'll see this in another slide, um, convection um, happening on the surface of the star. Uh, but before we go into that, we're going to see uh, just a video um, showing the outer um, envelope of the star that's been ejected out. So this is the, the, the part that um, is the size of our solar system. And then now we're zooming into the part of the star that is the size of uh, Mars or Jupiter. And so um, clearly, you know, depending on what um, observations you make and at what scale, you see different components of it. So, um, so again, um, we're, we're left to explain why you have these darker and brighter clumps. And, um, and, and so one possibility is that we are seeing uh, convection. And so convection is basically a boiling motion. Um, you see it um, when you boil water on your stovetop, um, where water um, gets really hot at the bottom, and, uh, and it, um, it circulates by uh, moving to the top. It releases its heat, and then the cooler water um, sinks back down. And we see this um, with stars as well, um, where um, on the surface of the sun, you see convection cells. and when um, people do computer simulations of um, red giant stars like Betelgeuse, you also see convective activity. And so the bright regions are the regions where gas is upwelling up from the center of the star um, or from the, um, the part of the star where, um, not quite at the center, where um, the fusion's taking place. And when that gas releases its energy, it cools, it gets darker, and it sinks back down um, to the surface. And so um, whereas the convective cells on the sun are much, much tinier than the sun for red giant stars like this, based on these simulations, they seem to um, take up a considerable fraction of the star surface. And so we could uh, be merely seeing um, convective cycle that, um, that block um, where the cooler parts of, of the star are basically, um, you know, blocking um, the, the stellar luminosity. And, um, and how much um, of this is correct, we'll just have to wait um, and see whether um, Betelgeuse um, starts regaining, starts getting um, brighter again. And um, so, you know, I guess there's still a chance that it could go supernova, but um, right now um, it also seems as if there are um, other phenomena that could be explaining the brightness changes.